In today's video, I am going to be repotting these Anthurium forgetii babies. It has been a long time coming. They have been in these nursery pots for forever at this point, and I'm going to be giving them a well needed repot. Stay tuned for the process. What is up, guys? My name is Lithius, and welcome to Roots Ready. So I knew it was time to repot these plants when a couple of things happened. One, I noticed that they're getting drier a lot quicker, whereas before they could last with these lids on for about two weeks before needing watering again. I have noticed that that time has now cut down to about once a week. Another thing that I've noticed is that I don't know if this if the camera will pick it up, but the leaves are growing to the point where we're actually pushing these plastic covers off of them. Um, and I'm sure that is also contributing to the fact that they're drying up a lot quicker. Um, so I think it is time for a repot and it has been, as I said, it's been a long time coming. So we're going to get in here, see what's happening and also evaluate the plant and the journey to get it up to this point. If you have been following my channel for a while, then check this video up here in the cards and that will show you how I pollinated, propagated these Anthurium babies. I got a lot of them out of just one mother plant. If you want to know how to be successful in propagating your Anthurium babies, then definitely go check that video out. So I'm going to be starting with this tray over here uh, for no reason in particular. I am going to take this out of this seedling tray. This seedling tray I actually got from a company called Wilco in the UK. It has been really good. You know, the fact that it comes with these plastic domes over here and you can actually cover your plant and get that really high humidity perfect for growing seedlings what i didn't like however was the fact that this tray actually has little holes in it so i was hoping that this would actually be something that actually catches the water especially as i like to grow some of my ethereums in semi-hydro it'd have been fantastic if i could use this as a cash pot almost just to sort of retain that water and be an act as a reservoir unfortunately it doesn't have that so it means that when it comes to watering these plants you can't just go ahead and water it and then empty out the tray afterwards. I have to take the whole thing off the tr off the shelf, as you can see behind me. And then I have to water it because the water is going to come out and just m make a whole mess. So that's my one sort of gripe of this was that I just wish it wasn't. It didn't have these holes. But, you know, I think it did the job for the most part. Another thing that I would say uh, that's happened since I've been growing these plants is I've noticed that the location that I have these plants in means that I have to have the light sort of right on top of it. And for some of these leaves, as you will see sort of here, and you know, you could just see, so for example, you can see all the venation on this leaf over here. You will see that that is because it's had too much light. And anthuriums, as you will know, they're sort of a, a medium to low light plant. So I was really, really blasting it with the light. But you know, for the fact that it got to this stage, they're quite big. Uh, for the most part, they're quite healthy. I'm really happy with that. So I think it's time for an upgrade. What I do like about these pots is that it's actually around the same size. It's got the same footprint as these nursery pots. However, it is a little bit taller, which is really, really good news, which means I can, you know, they have space to sort of really grow their roots and spread it out. I've also gone ahead and pre-moistened some sphagnum moss because that's going to be my potting soil of choice. So I think I'm going to start with some sort of the bigger plants because there are some really small baby ones in here. Uh, and that, that might just be because it's had less light, light because of the, the bigger plants sort of forming that canopy. So I'm just going to go ahead and gently take up the soil, take up the, the plant. Oh, look at that. Look at those roots. Lovely. That is gorgeous. That's really, really nice. So I'm really happy with that. You definitely know that these plants are ready for a repot. What I'm gonna do is just add a layer of moss to the bottom. Not too much though, because the, the growth habits of the Anthurium is that they tend to sort of push themselves out from the top of the, of the pot. So I'm just gonna backfill that slightly. Like so. And that's the first one done. As simple as that. Now the moss that I'm using, I will go ahead and I'll link it in the description below. The good thing about this moss is that it's very, very cheap. Um, especially if you have a lot of plants like I do today. The bad news is that it is 
just full of debris. The good thing is that I haven't noticed any molding or any other issues. It doesn't really hinder the growth of the plants. So I do take out the bigger, the bigger chunks sort of like this, uh, but uh, anything that is a little bit smaller, for example, this sort of, it looks like a, you know, a blade of grass or whatever. I don't bother with that one too much. I'm gonna grab the second plant. Oh yeah, it's stuck. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh gosh, look at those. Let me just take off these uh, dead leaves. But just look at that. Wow. Have a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. I just love anthuriums. They're definitely my favorite species of plant. Um, it's just the velvet leaves. They do it for me. It's the veins. They're just so striking. They're just really, really gorgeous to look at. They, they just look really elegant and beautiful. And for that reason, they always, they always have a special place in my heart. I remember I was running out of space. So I had to like sort of double up on some plants. So those ones I'll leave for last. And if I have enough pots, uh, I can separate them. If not, then they will have to stay just as they are as a double. So in terms of the care for these anthuriums, uh, what I have been doing is watering them regularly. I've experienced what happens when they go through some drought. They really, they're, they're unforgiving in some instances where they will just tend to really t start to wilt back and that will happen almost overnight. So you want to be really careful uh, with your watering, especially when they're seedlings um, and make sure that you're always on top of it. Recently, I noticed that some of mine had started to wilt and had to be really quick on it and give them a really heavy watering. Unfortunately, they do look like they're starting to bounce back. It's not these ones, it's because these ones are slightly bigger, so they were able to hold on to more water. However, my other tray over there, which are still very much small, um, those ones did sort of suffer just slightly. But as I said, I was able to save the majority of them by really reacting quickly and getting in there as soon as possible. Also, what I've noticed is at this sort of stage of their growth, they do tend to grow quite quickly. So you do wanna sort of give them a light feed as well, especially if you're like me and you have yours growing in sphagnum moss, then you really wanna make sure that you supplement um, the plant with some uh, good, good all round fertilizer just to aid them in their growth. Oh yes, look at the roots on this bad boy. Wow, lovely. Put it in, make sure it's nice and snug. And backfill, really get in there with the moss. You wanna make sure that you're not leaving any air gaps as well, because that will just mean that the, the plants, the roots might just end up drying up where they just have little access to that water. I would say that one of my favorite things to do uh, when it comes to planting is the repotting. And although sometimes I can procrastinate in terms of, you know, just getting up and getting it done, when I actually do start to repot the plants, that's the time I feel like I'm most engaged with its growth because, you know, I, that's, the, that's the main thing I'm doing. I'm just sort of setting them up for that growth in the future. I do like to do a lot of my repotting uh, in the run up to spring, which it is at the time of filming, it is March. So I do like to make sure that, you know, the plants are in that sort of that growing phase, stage. What you find is if you try to repot your plant outside of the growing season, is that they can sometimes just take a, a slight step back. To, so to avoid that, I try to do a lot of these propagations and, and so on. Uh, yeah, like this sort of time when it's approaching spring. Oh yes, have a look at this new leaf. Look how gorgeous that is. Can you see that? It's that bronze sort of green color. I really like the, the new growth on anthuriums. They just do it for me. What can I say? What I have noticed is that a lot of the plants that are a bit further away from the light, oh, look at the root on that, nice. Uh, sort of like this one over here, they tend to have sort of less burning on the leaves, less, less yellowing um, and so on, uh, which, is, which is a good sign, which is again, sort of just letting, reminding us 
that anthuriums, they don't want to be blasted with light all the time. So you want to be careful with that. So now I'll just go through with the moss and make sure that the plant is nice and snug in there. What I'm really trying to do is get the moss around the edge of the pot because that's where the roots are trying to cling to. So I'm giving them a little bit of something to grow and attach to. So I'm trying to make sure that the moss is nice and fluffy as I'm doing it. And I'm trying to put it around the wall of the pot. And then I then go through and just add some to the top, like so. That was the first 15 pots. So there's 24 cells in each one. However, not all of the cells have plants in them. Not all of them did uh, root. So, so for example, look at this one. There's a little baby here that just did not root. Can you see that? That's a little baby. So that's a little seed. So we'll just let that one go. There's another seed in here actually that did not root, but it's still green. I don't know if you can see that. Put a base layer. You can put the plants in like we did before. If you have a look here, the moss has started to sprout this other plant. I've always just left them on, but I think I'll take it off now, just in case it is consuming the nutrients and preventing this plant from growing. So I noticed that this one is still very, very small and it's growing quite bushy as well. Can you see that? The camera picks it up. It's very small, still very bushy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just pot it up with other small plants as well. So for example, I have some in this pot that are still relatively small. So there you go. So because these ones are sort of the similar size, I'm gonna leave them together. Uh, and that way they can grow at sort of similar rates. And it's gonna be the same thing with these very tiny ones over here. And now that it's in a bigger pot and they're not getting covered by the other plants and they can get a, a little bit more light, hopefully that will encourage them to grow. So. There's a nice little bundle here. That's the first seedling tray completed. That was 24 cells, but I think there were maybe 20 in here in total. So I'm gonna do something slightly different with this seedling tray, something I haven't done before. If you wanna see what that is, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. It's gonna be exciting, I think so. Fingers crossed anyway. One down, one to go. There's about four gaps in there, so there's probably only about 20 viable plants in here. And as always, a little layer on the bottom like that like that then we can take the plants and plop them into their new homes this one has definitely got a little bit of light damage and probably has been you know nearly decapitated by the lid going on top of this but i think it will make a speedy recovery oh look at that this one has a baby leaf coming in can you see that just here lovely that's how you know it's time, like spring is around the corner. It truly is. I wanna know what your favorite genus of plant is. As I've said, mine is definitely, definitely gonna be anthuriums. I just, I just love everything about them, especially the velvet leaf ones. I would say sort of this, your more common anthuriums that you find in big box stores, probably less so, just because, you know, I think you interact with them less because, uh, you can't really, I've tried to pollinate those. They, they just don't seem to want to do it. I don't think they're able to actually be pollinated. But these ones, you know, like if you take, if you take care of them, you give them the right kind of um, environments to grow in, they will give you, they will appreciate that. And they will start to sort of push out these new growth um, quite readily. They, you know, they get these massive big leaves once they mature. And also you can actually propagate them as we can see here. Now I'm sure there's a way to do it with the box store um, uh, and theriums. I just haven't quite worked it out yet. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, there's not too many left. I think by my count under 10. So we should be done relatively soon. And then I can just put these plants into their new homes. So I was close, there's only 11 left. So as always, small layer. We'll start to grab our plants. A 
And that was the last one, the last of the set. How many did we get through? So we're gonna try to count them all. <laughs> Bear with me. So how many plants did we pot? Were you keeping count? The grand total is 40. 40 individual pots. However, some pots have multiple plants in them like this one over here. This one has about five or six different seedlings that are just growing a little bit slower. But 40, that's pretty good going if you do ask me. So the next thing to do is just to get these guys up on their shelves and make sure that they settle in well. <laughs> 